Ah, beat em ups, for when you want to punch someone in the face without suffering the consequences. Hey everyone, it's Tack here, and today we're looking at what games were the original beat em ups and how they helped define the modern genre. Do you love beat em ups? Let me know your favourite below. Beat em ups, also known as brawlers and sometimes beat em alls, were big business when they first found their way onto arcade floors in 1984. Kung Fu Master is considered to be the wise old mustachioed man on the hill that first defined the genre. Not only was it an important step in allowing gamers to punch people, but it was also the first title to incorporate side-scrolling into a game. This would have a huge effect for the industry at large, inspiring everything from Super Mario Bros to Racer Excitebike. As the name implies, it was based on Jackie Chan's 1984 movie Wheels on Mills and Bruce Lee's Game of Death. It also set up the extremely popular plot point structure of the kidnapped girlfriend being rescued by their strong but silent partner. A uh, uh, quick side note actually, my, my girlfriend's been kidnapped by the local underworld gang and I've been told they'll only take subscribers as ransom payment, so do me a favour and smack that sub button. If not for me, then, then for my unnamed generic girlfriend. Niketsu Kua Kuyo Kun, renamed and rebranded as Renegade in North America, which is a lot easier to say, released in 1986 and moved beat em ups into the city streets, popularising the underworld revenge plots of many subsequent brawlers. Up to this point, beat em ups had focused more on the traditional martial arts school of fighting. A lot of the artwork was inspired by the film The Warriors, which saw a New York gang try and make their way back to Coney Island, all the time being chased by other gangs. It introduced key elements such as belt scrolling and the ability to move horizontally and vertically in the fighting areas. Renegade and Double Dragon, released in 1987, would help to usher in a golden age of the beat em up genre. They made enemies a lot tougher, meaning they required several hits before they died. Double Dragon was massively inspired by the Mad Max movie, which had released the same year as the Warriors in 1979. So 1979 was apparently the year when society was on the brink of destruction, but still had enough hairspray to let everyone have massive perms. Much like Kung Fu Masters that came before, you had to fight your way into the Black Warriors turf to rescue Marion, girlfriend of protagonist Billy Lee. Double Dragon took things even further by allowing players to pick up and use weapons, and also allowed for two-player cooperative games. The late 80s saw a flood of brawlers both into the arcades and also onto home consoles. Titles that stood out from the crowd included the acclaimed Golden Axe and Final Fight, both released in 1989. Golden Axe took the brawler into the fantasy setting, allowing you to play as a barbarian, dwarf or Amazonian, and was celebrated for its multiple protagonists with different fighting styles. A little and perhaps somewhat disappointing side note, although the game starts with you riding on a giant turtle, this had nothing to do with the Terry Pratchett Discworld novels as I had believed in my earlier years. Final Fight improved on the combo attacks of early games, making the sprites much larger and the moves a lot more dynamic. It also lamed a lot of the characters after 80s rock musicians, including Axl Rose, Slash, Sid Vicious, Billy Idol and Poison. I'm not sure a modern game having you fight villains called Gaga, Beyonce, Baber and Grande would have the same ring to it. In a massive break from the norm, you had to rescue girlfriend of Cody Travers, one of the playable characters in the game. At this point, the beat em up genre was pretty well defined. It revolved around melee combat, tasking the players with defeating an ever increasing number of bad guys as they made their way across the level, stopping at various points to fight off waves of attackers. Often there would be a mini boss at the end of each stage, weapons could be picked up along the way, and different combos could be used with different inputs on controllers. Some games did mix up the formula of the brawler. 1988 Bad Doos vs Dragon Ninja, real name, introduced platforming elements to the game. River City Ransom, released in 1989, allowed you to upgrade your character using cash collected from defeated enemies. It also heavily broke the mould from normal plot lines of most brawlers by having you rescue Cindy, the girlfriend of one of the protagonists in the game. 1988 Prisoner of War also included guns into the mix of weapons, straying into shooter territory. The Streets of Rage series was launched in 1990, borrowing heavily from Final Fight. Streets of Rage 2, which came two years later, was one of the first home console beat-em-ups that matched the acclaim of their arcade rivals. Personally, I think it's just because it had you 
were not saving your girlfriend for once. Instead, you were saving your older brother. It was designed by brother and sister team Ayano and Yuzo Koshiro and was heavily influenced by Street Fighter 2, which ironically owed its origins to the beat-em-up games that had come before it. So keen were the development team to expand on the movesets and features of Streets of Rage 2 that their considerable amount of time was taken to actually improve the Mega Drive and Genesis cartridge. Specifications with larger memory caches were released, for example. There were also some very successful TV and movie crossovers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Batman Returns being notable callouts. The golden age of the genre saw its decline in the early 90s. Titles like Street Fighter 2 had drawn a lot of the beat-em-up audience towards the reinvented fighting game, and the subsequent emergence of 3D games stemmed the popularity of 2D fighting games in general. It was also really hard to look cool in a beat-em-up whilst wearing a shell suit. The genre at large set the scene for a lot of games that would come after, even if we don't think of these as traditional brawlers. Titles that have called out their design and success to beat-em-ups include Ninja Gaiden, God of War, Devil May Cry, and Bayonetta to name just a few. In recent years there's also been a mini revival in the beat-em-up genre. Guacamelee 2 was a beat-em-up metroidvania released in 2018. In 2020, classic series Battletoad saw a new game, and Streets of Rage 4 released a critical acclaim. In 2022, the eagerly anticipated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge released a very positive reviews, and its development had intentionally focused on drawing a lot of tropes from beat-em-ups from the gold age of the late 1980s. So while beat-em-ups may no longer reach the lofty heights of fame that they have once had, we owe a huge amount to these games. Basically anything that came after which allows you to punch and kick your way into the final levels can see its roots in games I've mentioned above. So what about you? Do you remember any of these games? Any others spring to mind? Drop me a comment and let me know. Until next time, I've been Tack, and you've been just marvellous.